Today we wanted to go through how to multiply two numbers using an array or an area model. Whenever multiplying two numbers together, it is very similar to finding the area of a rectangle. So in the case of 3 times 2, when we multiply these two numbers together, it's like finding the area. So if we consider this side to be 2 units long, and this side to be 3 units long, then we can assume that this area, that this, the length of this side would be like cutting it into two equal pieces, this side into three equal pieces, and when we multiply these together, we find that the total area of this shape is six equal squares. And you'll have to excuse the size of the squares, but I think you get the idea. Now, if we use the same model when we're multiplying larger numbers, like 32 times 23, we could see that we could break up this side into 23 equal size shapes, or we could say, let's pretend this side is 20 plus another 3 long. And that just makes a little bit easier numbers for us to work with. So I'm going to draw a line in here, assuming that this part, this length from here to here is 20, and this is 3. And it's only a sketch because we just want to get the idea. Likewise, the other side we can break up into easy numbers. And we're going to say it's 30 and 2. So 30 plus 2 more for 32. Now, we can calculate the area of each of the individual rectangles. So this rectangle here, 30 by 20, the total area of this rectangle is going to be 6. 3 times 2 is 6. And then we have times 10, times 10, or 600. Likewise, we can go to the rectangle on the right. 3 times 30 is equal to 90. 20 times 2 is equal to 40. And then our final rectangle is 3 times 2 is 6. Adding all of these together, we get 600 plus 90 plus 40 plus 6 for a total of 690, 736. So we find that the area of this rectangle is 736, which means that 32 times 23 is equal to 736. And we can do this for any numbers that we multiply together. We can use a rectangle to multiply. Trying to make some connections with the algorithm that we've used in the past, we can say 3 times 2, because these are both in the 1's place, is equal to 6. We can say 3 times 3, however this 3 is actually 30 because it's in the tens place, 3 times 30 is equal to 90. So 90 plus 6 is 96. Or in other words, 3 times 32 is 96. 2 times 2 is 4, however this 2 is in the tens place, so it's actually a 40. Sometimes we talk about putting a zero as a placeholder. We only put the zero down because the second digit we're multiplying is in the tens place. And then we want to take 2 times 3, which is really 20 times 30 is 600. Adding these all together, we get a 6. 90 plus 40 is 130. And we carry 100 and 6. 100 plus 100 is 736, so we still get the same numbers. We can see some links between these numbers. If I draw a couple of circles around, this 6 here, this area in this shape, is actually equal to this 6 here. This 90 is actually equal to this 90 here, so 6 plus 90. This 40 down here is equal to the 40 here that results from multiplying two, 20 times 2. So this 40 here, the 
these two are the same in our algorithm. And this 600 is actually this 600 here. So we can see these models are very similar. However, when looking at the model, some students may find it easier to look at it like this or to follow the traditional model that's been used in the past. Either one works equally well. However, this one here shows you the place value a little better. Now let's move on to decimal numbers. What happens if we have a number like 3.2 times 2.3? Well, once again, we can break up our rectangle into separate pieces, and we want to put them into compatible um, numbers. So if we look at 2.3, then we could say that this length is 2, and this length is smaller, so we're going to call it 0 0.3. We have 3.2, so we're going to say this length is 3, and this length here is 0 0.2. 3 times 2, once again, gives us an area of 6. 3 times 0 0.3. If we had 0 0.3 and added it 3 times, we would get 0 0.9. So 3 times 0 0.9 is, or 3 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.9. Sorry about that. Likewise, 0 0.2, two groups of 0 0.2 is 0 0.4, which makes sense. And then finally, 0 0.3 times 0 0.2, we have to say, we have to look at that as what is 2 tenths of 0 0.3. So if we were to take 0 0.3 and divide it into tenths, each tenth would be 0 0.03 and we're going to add those twice so we get 0 0.06 and the shortcut for doing that or the way we often think about it is it's like taking 3 times 2 is 6 but though then we're going to divide by 100 to get 0 0.3 divide by 100 again to get 0 point, or by 10 again sorry to get 0 0.2 which is like dividing the whole thing by 100 so again let me say that again to get to from 3 to 0 0.3, we divide by 10. To get from 2 to 0 0.2, we divide by 10. So we'd want to divide our solution by 100 or divide by 10 twice. We can add these numbers together. We get 6 plus 0 0.9 plus 0 0.4. 0 0.4 and 0 0.9 is 1.3. So that's going to be 7.3 plus 0 0.06 or we get 7.36. Now we always want to do a mental check to see if that makes sense. If we look at our original question up here, we can see that this is very close to 3, this is very close to 2. We know that 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 7.36 is pretty close to 6. And when we consider that we have a 0.2 and a 0.3, when we multiply that up, it seems to make sense that that would make up the difference of the 1.36. So following this method, we can certainly multiply and it all makes sense. Or we can choose to use a traditional method in order to do that. Taking 0.3 times 0.2, when we multiply those together, we're going to get a 6 and we can multiply as if the decimal wasn't there and we deal with the decimal after. 3 times 3 is a 9 or in this case it's 3 times or it's 0.3 times 3 um, then we're going to take a, a 2 times a 0.2 we're going to use our 0 once again as a placeholder and we get a 4 and then we take 2 times 3 is 6 adding these numbers together we're going to get 7.36. Now, why does a decimal point go here? Well, if we look, this is 32. If we were to treat this like it wasn't a decimal, we have to divide by 10. And if we were to treat this as if it wasn't a decimal, to get to the decimal, we need to divide by 10. And dividing by 10 twice is the same as dividing by 100. So we need to move our decimal over two places. And we get 7.36. So we can see we still get our 7.36.
once again looking at how these connect our 0 0.06 here is the same as this number here this 6 our 0 0.9 is the same as this 9 and if we look when we added this up in this column it is actually equal to 0 0.9 and I should have said the 6 is actually 6 hundredths our 0 0.4 is going to be right here as the point 0.4 and then finally our 6 is our 6 holes which is here. So we can multiply decimals the same way that we multiply with uh, any two digit number except we need to take into account the number of decimal places. So I like to think of it as this is divide by 10 and this is divide by 10 so when I'm dividing by 10 and I'm dividing by 10, then in the solution, I need to divide by 10 times 10, which is dividing by 100 in my final solution, which means I need to move the decimal point over two places. I hope this video helped you a little bit. And if there are any questions, don't hesitate to see your math teacher. Thank you.